Jamie had something to do with this. I'm always, like she says, the wind beneath her wings, but I'm really not. And I'm really not the speaker. I'm always the one that says what she can do. Yes, you can. But under my breath, I'm telling myself, Lord, have mercy. I'm glad it wasn't me. Call me. But I'd like to introduce you to Jamie Knight, who is not just Jamie Knight, but she's the youth ambassador for the United States. I know she has, people don't know that, because these are seeds that have been planted over the last, I would say, 10 years. I'm not going to put a number on anything. So in, in, in anywhere that you want to maybe change it later. <laughs> because I'm mad. But at any rate, she was Youth Ambassador of the United States, City of Philadelphia first. She also has a song that she wrote uh, with Jay-Z. She wrote most of the song, basically, but Jay-Z has credited, credits with her uh, on that song. It's called Can't Play Me. And it was also right before Rihanna, people don't know this, was signed, but it's a lot of things that as a singer, she was already an established artist. There was a lot of things in her style that she didn't want to change. And I didn't make her. Sometimes I said, oh, Lord, have mercy, though. It's a lot of money. I didn't make her. And I've always been supportive of both of my children. You heard James Knight earlier, who was um, her um, announcer. We called him the Screaming MC. And he also was uh, a host of a hit TV show, uh, kid side when he was a little boy and I was so proud of that and he um, my brother James Knight um, he announced her uh, for a show he was couldn't have been no more than seven years old at Carnegie Hall and she was the youngest ever to grace that stage singing jazz so I could go and the father there's in the audience, James Knight. Amen. That's where the name comes from, Jamie and James. Amen. All I did basically, all I did basically is give birth. As I uh, had James in the name, Jamie, Jamie first, and then James. But I want to introduce you, Jamie. I'm so proud of the things that she's did. Not only to me is she a beautiful girl inside and out. But she's actually been the one between, beneath my wings for me. I, um, tomorrow on everybody's prayer, I'm going through a bout with breast cancer. And some people are ashamed to tell it. I have my bracelet and my, my earrings on. And I want everybody to pray for me. Because the kind of fear that you should have it be, should be for the Lord. And I fear not. And I know that I'm going to be a survivor. a big mouth for Jesus Christ. I always did, but for Jesus Christ, I've always had a big mouth for that, and I want to be able to have a big mouth testimony for my survival. So without further ado, I'm proud, it gives me pride and pleasure to introduce my daughter to you to bring on the word of God through God to her lips, to you, the congregation of Calvary. Amen. 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 I want to preach to you all this morning from the book of Jonah. And if you have your Bibles or your cell phones or whatever you have, I'll give you a quick opportunity to get them out. The book of Jonah. There are three sections that I would like to concentrate on this morning. The first is Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. And it reads, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish where he went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for the port. And after paying the fare, he went abroad and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. 
The second section is uh, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Then we're going to go over to chapter 3, verse 1 and 3, where it says, Then the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. I want to speak with you this morning from the topic, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What you want to do when they come for you. It's confession time. It's my conclusion sermon here, and I think it's time for me to make a confession. I've been having a lot of conversations with people about how I've been so obedient unto the Lord, answering his call quickly and swiftly. But if I really want to keep it real with everyone here, I have not been so obedient unto the Lord. I did not answer his call the first time. The first time the Lord called me was actually through my mother. We were having a conversation about my future plans. We were in the kitchen, actually, and uh, based on how I was, she suggested, well, have you ever thought about maybe being a preacher? And immediately, I said, oh, no. I, I, I wasn't a talker. Many of you know I've been on stage since I was younger, but when I was on stage, my mom used to have to make motions to me from the audience to make me talk at certain points. And once I got up there with the mic, I would basically look at her like, um, no. <laughs> I like to sing and sit my behind down. So when she, when, she, when she said that, I immediately said, no, I don't even like to talk, mom. You, you know that. I, uh, the Lord has, been, has gifted me with a voice, and I believe that's what he wants me to use, my singing voice. All right. The Lord pursued me through my mother and I answered in opposition, even though I was on the stairwell in high school while everybody was at lunch reading the Bible, even though uh, I was in the music industry having a difficult time because I didn't want to sing certain lyrics and do certain things. Still, I answered with opposition because I felt certainly ministry was not for me. Most of the things that we confess about ourselves in life have to do with what we are running toward or from. Mm -hmm. There's always someone after us in this life, but how do we react when we realize this? Do we face those who are after us? Do we hide or do we run? Well. This is the question that when answered reveals who we really are. I discovered this first when I was younger, watching the popular television show, Cops. Now, a lot of you know this show, but I was first drawn to it, not by the show, but by the theme song. I don't know if any of you know it is very popular and very catchy. It goes, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? And then there's a note he holds at the end. Very catchy. It drew me in to watch the show. And most of you know this show. It's, it's basically a reality show where the cops post up in different locations, policing different areas. Uh -huh. They witness crimes or are called to the scene of crimes and they pursue suspects. Uh -huh. And it's always too interesting to me that when the cops would try to pursue a criminal, uh -huh. when they would call out to them to get them to stop doing whatever it was that they were doing, no matter how calmly they started out with their pursuit, the criminal would run. Right. Now, I don't condone criminal activity, and I'm not trying to go on record as I'm giving criminals advice, but if I had to give a criminal some advice, I would say to stop running. <laughs> because you always get caught when you run, and honestly, when you start running, that's how the law knows that you're guilty. Because otherwise, why would you be running? I mean, I would say that maybe if you robbed a liquor store and they, the cops see you and say, stop, thief, and you just stand there, they probably would look at you like, oh, maybe, maybe he, it wasn't him. Right, right. Maybe it was you that's running, right. you know? Because right. why would you be running? Right. Come on now. And then when you get too far ahead of the law, when you run, 
They have to do things to stop you in your tracks. They start firing shots. They send the dogs out after you, and you get hurt when you run for the law. Another thing I always felt interesting about this show is that the criminals were always at rock bottom. A place where really jail might at least give them the opportunity to live. But instead, they're running away from life toward the thing that will most likely just continue to kill them as the theme song plays in the background. Uh -huh. This was a very entertaining show, and as I watched, I always hoped that someone would be smart enough to run in the right direction, but these moments, of course, were few and far between. Well, well. I would imagine that we too are very entertaining to the Lord God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Watching us is probably a lot like watching cops. Mm -hmm. The angels would be like the cops. For the word of the Lord says he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And what are cops but guards? Mm -hmm. That's good. And I know we don't like the idea of angels being compared to police, but the word of the Lord says the son of man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness. All right. The angels are God's holy police. All right, like that. Amen. We are the criminals and sin is our crime. That's good. That's good. Our crime against the Lord. All right, good. Sometimes our crime is as big as letting Satan lead us into our own destruction as we run away from the voice of the Lord. We hear him, but we run. Stop, he calls out to us. Stop, my son and my daughter. Put the drugs down. You're running further into addiction. And it's going to lead you to death. I can save you. Run back into my direction. Or stop, my son or my daughter. I know the enemy has convinced you that the flesh is too weak to say no, but you're running into an STD and you won't live to see the cure. Stop. Run back in my direction. I have the remedy. Stop. I have the cure. Sometimes our crime is simply disobedience. Mm -hmm. The Lord asks us to do something and we say no because we have something else we want to do. Right, right. We cannot seem to stop running. Mm -hmm. yes. What are you running from? Come on now. What are you running to? All right. I was running into a life of stardom. Certainly, God gave me this voice to be a famous singer. Ministry was not for me. All right. What are you running to? Good. Jonah was a runner. Mm -hmm. He was probably the first episode of Cops. <laughs> the Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jonah. It doesn't say how the word came, but it said it came, or in other words, the Lord came for him. Right. But unlike the criminals on cops, the Lord wasn't coming to him for committing a sin. He was coming to ask him to tell others about their sin. The Lord was trying to hire Jonah That's good. as one of his officers. And as soon as Jonah hears the Lord, he runs. Cowards run. And fools run in the wrong direction. Which one are you? I was running in the wrong direction uh -huh. and I didn't realize it. I was running into the direction of an industry that Jesus. allows you to be an addict and gives you enough money to the point where no one is willing to put their hand up and say you got a problem, you need to stop because you're paying everybody's bills. Yeah. Amen. I was yeah. running into an industry that capitalizes off of people's relationships to the point that even when it becomes toxic to, to them, it, it doesn't make a difference. They just continue right on pushing. I was running in the wrong direction. Jonah was running in the wrong direction. Because he was going in the wrong direction, the Lord caused an incredible storm to rage all around him and it affected those who were with him. Now, when the Lord comes for you, it's really best just to at least stop and see what he wants because when you run, right. just like cops, he will have to do something to stop you before you get too far. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now in cops, they reach into their holsters and pull out a gun. And the Lord, he lifts up his hands and throws down a storm. And now I'm no criminal. Yeah. Thanks be to God, my yeah. crime of sin was wiped clean, but 
For anyone still living in the crime of sin, I want to tell you, please, don't run from the Lord. Amen. Because when you run from the law, shots get fired in the form of storms and you may not make it. That's why a lot of people are going through so many storms in life right now. Your kids are acting crazy. Your husband or wife is acting crazy. You can't seem to shake that monkey of addiction off your back. And this is going wrong. That is going wrong. You don't have enough money to pay your bills. You don't have enough food to eat. And it's not the devil. And it's not God trying to protect you. It's simply because he asked you to do something. And you ran in the wrong direction. When you run from the law, the shots being fired at you might affect some innocent bystanders. And rather than caught, get caught in the crossfire of your mess, oftentimes they will give you up to the law. This is what happened to Jonah. He heard the Lord's call and like many of us, he ran. He got on a boat and he tried to flee the Lord. He ran to a, a, to a ship with uh, people who did not even know his God. God sent a storm to catch Jonah, but... When the storm started affecting them, they threw him overboard. Yes. Isn't it amazing how people who don't even know our God can be more obedient unto his will and to his way than those of us who know him? Yeah. They didn't even know God. They didn't know his plan for Jonah's life, but they knew it wasn't on their boat, so they threw him overboard. Uh -huh. How many times have you gotten thrown overboard? Jesus. Thrown out of the world because before you recognized your anointing, they did. They recognized that you were wanted elsewhere. Thrown out of the crack house just before it got raided. Thrown out of the getaway car just before everybody else got locked up. Thrown out the bed just before you got an STD. You were thrown overboard. Or like me, I'll never forget, I was in L.A. Reid's office. L.A. Reid is a an executive at Def Jam Records, and I was in his office. I, they had got my makeup done, I got my hair done, I felt fabulous. And I went up there and I did a wonderful audition. And after I was finished, he said to me, you know, we're looking for more of a Beyonce type of artist, but a partier, a party girl. I looked at him like, what? I just sang, and, and believe me, when you're 16 singing, like I'm singing now, it's, it's more effective. And so I just looked around like, well, if I'm singing like I'm supposed to be singing, does the voice should sell the records. What difference does it make whether I'm a party girl or not? But I didn't understand what he was saying. What he was saying was, baby, I, this ain't the anointing bus. Now see the anointing on you. I don't know where the anointing bus is. I don't know where the anointing boat is, but it ain't here. This is the get high bus. This is the drinking bus. This is the slide down on the pole bus. And this ain't the bus for you. So I don't want no unnecessary storms to come and mess with my high, so you got to get off before we leave. Jonah was thrown overboard. And we would think this was his time to drown because he was all alone in the sea. But the word of the Lord says that the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. Now my first time reading Jonah, I would have said that the fish swallowing him up was his punishment. But when I look at how the Lord punishes when he punishes, I had to think twice. I had to look back at the book of Numbers, how the Lord took the life of Moses so that he would not be able to enjoy the promised land. I had to look back at the book of Samuel where the Lord punished David for taking Uriah's wife and killing Uriah by allowing their first child, Nathan, to die. I had to look back at Adam and Eve who were the first to experience death as a result of their disobedience. And who can forget Jesus? suffering for the punishment of the sins of the world on the old rugged cross. The Lord punishes with death when he punishes. So unless the Lord was having a really good day, providing a fish to swallow Jonah was really not his punishment. Based on the Lord's history, having the well to kill Jonah might have been more likely his punishment. But having the fish to swallow Jonah was more like a misdemeanor charge. A timeout. Sometimes when 
the Lord calls us, it's scary, so we hide. Or sometimes when he comes after us, we don't want to get caught, so we run. But when the Lord wants us to do something for him, he can create an atmosphere where we're forced to think about what we have been asked to do. This is what the fish represents. When the Lord comes to us, uh, when we run far enough, he will send something to swallow us up and sit us down. And maybe he sent financial struggle to swallow you up. So you couldn't afford to do nothing but talk to the Lord. Maybe he let loneliness swallow you up so you were by yourself and you couldn't do nothing but talk to the Lord. Maybe like me, he let rejection swallow you up everywhere you turned, you couldn't get in the door, so you were forced to think about the Lord. Maybe he let sickness swallow you up so that you have to be forced into a position of constant prayer, just like Job. Yeah, yeah. The Lord sent a fish to swallow him, and inside the belly of the fish, he prayed to the Lord. Mm. With nowhere else to run, he was forced to surrender, and he prayed to the Lord. And after he prayed, the Bible says, the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. It's interesting that the only way Jonah was able to get out of the jail of the fish was by way of a sticky situation. Sticky, disgusting mom. Just like us, he had to get into a sticky situation to get out of the solitary confinement right. the Lord had provided for him. All right. My question is, why we always got to wait to get in a sticky situation before we're comfortable being pushed out into the forefront for the Lord? Why we always got to wait till we done got ourselves in a mess to be ready to answer the Lord's call? Why we always got to wait so our situation is so nasty that it's stinking to be willing to be washed clean. Why we always gotta wait for the Lord to make whatever he allowed to swallow us up to vomit us out before we can see the light. Why we got to get attacked by storms, thrown overboard, swallowed up by a fish and vomited out on dry land all just to see that who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's in the Bible. You could have saw that before you started running. This is what happens when we run. We go through unnecessary trials and tribulations. But if we're blessed of the Lord, if, if he has mercy on us like Jonah, he will give us a second chance. For after he's vomited out of the fish or to dry land, the word of the Lord says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give to you. And Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went. To Nineveh. Mm -hmm. He went to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Just like me, I didn't answer the call of the Lord uh, the first time when it came through my mother. I right. had to go through all this long journey, uh, getting doors slammed in my face, having people telling me they were looking for a party artist, <laughs> having to turn on the radio and uh, listen to New songs that I know I wrote. <laughs> Popping in somebody's CD and hearing my voice in the background. But I don't see my credits though. I had to go through all of that for God to place me in a spirit filled church. For a minister to come to me a second time and say, Sister, did you ever consider ministry? Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the second time, mm -hmm. I said yes. Right. Yes. 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 If watching the story of our lives is anything like cops, the Lord must be getting a kick out of us. Mm. <laughs> Jonah must be like the very first episode and Though the story is rerunning in the Bible, many of us have not learned our lesson yet because we are still running. But when you run from the law, shots get fired. Innocent people are affected. You get locked up or swallowed up and you often have to get into a real sticky situation before you can get set free. But we all have the power to be set free 
if we accept Jesus. God is after us. He comes to get closer to us through God the Son, and he chases us through the Holy Spirit. God sees us. God wants to save us. God has things that he wants for you to do, and he can chase you, or you can turn yourself in. The choice is yours. It's confession time. How many times has the Lord called you? And how many times did you not answer? The word of the Lord came to me, and I answered the second time. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, and he answered the second time. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are after us all. They come for you. The question is, what you want to do when they come for you? Amen. 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 We seem to be all family here, but if you're here today and you're tired of running in the wrong direction, tired of shots being fired. Jesus. And you believe you heard the Lord's call and you're ready to meet him halfway. I invite you to the altar right now. The altar is open. The Lord is after us all. He'll shoot at us to get our attention. He'll send storms, wind, rain, fire to get our attention. But all he wants is for us to come to him. Amen. The altar is open. Second call, if you don't have a church home, I could do a commercial for Calvary. Mm -hmm. The love of God is here, and although many of us say, well, I can read the Bible at home, and I can feel the presence of the Lord at home. Yes, you can, but church is the equivalent to your date with the Lord, and we all know you can not be in a relationship with anyone without ever going out with them. So if you do not have a church home, I invite you today to allow Calvary to be your cover. Amen, amen. Call number three. The altar is open. If you have been running, you're trying to run in the right direction, and you still are experiencing trials and tribulations, stumbles and fumbles, the altar is open. The Lord sees you, the Lord hears you, and he wants to help you. The altar is open. Or maybe you want to pray on behalf of someone else. God knows there's so many people who have been delivered, not by their own prayers, but because of the prayers of somebody else. Somebody else's mother, somebody else's grandmother, somebody else's father. Stand for someone else who may be in the need of prayer. The altar is open. Why don't you come? Those of you at your, at your seats, you may take your seats and pray for those at the altar. The altar is still open if you want to come. Amen. Amen. 